Well, hello, I'm Rick Hanushek. I'm an economist at the Hoover Institution of Stanford University, and I'm pleased to be here today. We are just now putting out a new book that I've done with Paul Peterson of Harvard University and the Hoover Institution, and with Ludger Woosman of the University of Munich. The book is called Endangering Prosperity, A Global View of the American School. And it represents what I think is the most serious problem facing America today. Our schools really aren't doing very well in terms of international competitiveness. We see that there are most of the developed countries of the world are actually doing better than the United States. This book has lots of statistics in it just to make the case so that everybody is clear that the United States is not doing well. If you look at the graph of international performance in where the U.S. stands, you see that we're down below the developed countries of the world. Now, we've been able to overcome this in the past because we have other advantages in the United States that makes our economy do well even though our citizens are not as educated as those in other places. In particular, we have had the best economic institutions of any country in the world. We've had free and open labor and capital markets. We've had a higher education system that's traditionally ranked as the top in the world. And we've allowed immigrants in from abroad that are highly skilled and get schooling abroad and then bring those skills to the United States. This has allowed us to grow and be the nation's uh, the world's richest nation. But right now we're facing competition. We see that other countries are trying to copy and emulate exactly what we have done in terms of uh, our economic systems and our schools, and they've done better in some cases. Now what I fear, and what the evidence in our book shows, is that this is going to harm us, our our current position in terms of the education of our youth is going to harm us in the future when it comes to economic growth. If we look historically, we can see a graph of how all the countries in the world do relative to their performance on these tests. Now, this graph is a very simple statistical analysis that says that the long-term economic growth of countries the growth in GDP per capita between 1960 and 2000 is highly dependent upon test scores and on one other factor, and that is where the country started. We look at the GDP per capita in 1960, and we know that if you start behind, it's easier to grow fast. Why? Because all you have to do is copy what everybody else does. But if you're ahead, you have to invent new things. You have to innovate. But once you allow for that, almost all the differences in growth rates across countries is explained by simply the test scores of the countries. And it's a big difference. If we could be at the level of achievement of our northern neighbors, the Canadians, we would grow faster, at least according to historical record, um, and that added growth would be sufficient to add 20% per year to every worker's paycheck over the next 80 years. In other words, it's a big deal. And it makes a big difference where we are in the next 30 to 50 years, whether we can improve our schools or not. That's the message of um, endangering prosperity. The message is that we now have to take our schools seriously because they are our future.